Heyo, duckies! Andy Lippy here, and I, first of all, I want to apologise. I've not uploaded for over a week now because I got the virus. I got the virus, and I missed Christmas. It was a sad time. Cool story. Thank you to everybody that came over to Twitch and kept me company as well. So thank you so much, everyone that did that. Uh, today, hot off the press. This is insane. We have got the first kind of beta, rather than a release candidate. We've got OBS Studio twenty-seven point. Two now a load of ton a ton load of features a load of ton load features uh, all absolutely jam packed in this. Before we get into it and take a little look at what there is, I wouldn't recommend updating to this because obviously it is a beta. Make sure if you want to play around with it, use it in portable mode, okay? So it doesn't kind of overwrite your previous install of OBS. If you want to know how to do portable mode, I'll leave my video down below. All right. It's super easy to do and it means that you don't have to worry about literally any of your settings or anything like that. And you get to have a play with all the new stuff and there are some absolutely amazing features. So many quality of life improvements. Let's get into it. Put your rug in the stone. So let's take a little look at the GitHub page. I'm going to leave all the links, as I say, down in the description. These are all the features and additions, tweaks, bug fixes. There's absolutely tons of them. Look at them all. Loads of stuff on there. Uh, obviously, these are all subject to change. There might be more, there might be less, depending on how the beta and the release candidates go. We've seen it in the past uh, where features might get pulled or added at a later date. So obviously, bear that in mind when you're watching this video. But this gives us an insight of the things that we're gonna, they're going to be doing. Uh, there's a lot of things that are only um, dependent on certain uh, setups such as uh, only things that have been updated for Linux and OBS so you users can obviously check down the list to see what is going to be uh, what improvements are there for you and depending on if you're using AJA um, uh, hardware or anything like that you you can actually it, this is actually supported now by OBS which is insane uh, you guys know who you are so don't worry about that uh, let's take a look at some of the great stuff. The, the first one that I want to point out right here is added the ability to set different blend modes to sources via the source right click context menu. So you guys might actually know, uh, I've not done a video on it, but there's the multi-source effect plugin that was created by uh, Norihiro. And this basically allowed you to, to create uh, effects by kind of blending sources together which is really, really cool. Uh, but this is now getting added to OBS in this update. So taking a little look at how that works is say we've got our camera just here. Let's choose a image for instance. So I'm gonna add an image just in here. I'm gonna press browse and just choose a random image. What we got? Oh, let's choose this, SpongeBob. Yeah, here we go. So it's bright green. We've got a lot of bright colors on there that we can play with. If you right click now, on your source there is blending mode so it can obviously do additive if you guys have used like photoshop you'll understand exactly how this works and what's beautiful about this version is you'll see it doesn't matter uh, what is behind it it acts you're not blending two sources together like that plugin it's blending everything that's below so it you do get the full layer effects so we can change the blending mode again to maybe i don't know subtract and you'll be able to see depending on what sort of thing that you're looking for it'll work it, you guys that have used photoshop and done blending modes before it's just beautiful that we've got that functionality inside of obs and it's so easy to use which is just mind-blowing so some of the other crazy stuff that we've got, I mean, we've got more encoders, which is great. Uh, we've also got more hotkey support. So this is one, Exceldro actually made a script for, for this exact thing. Um, but it, it was basically globally across all your browser sources. Now you can actually set a hotkey for browser sources to refresh, which is really, really nice. Um, and also hotkey searches and duplication detection, which is beautiful as well. So if we go up to our uh, settings and we go to say hotkeys, it takes a little second to load in beta at the moment. It's a little bit slow, it might crash. So this is why you don't update your main OES when it, it when it's on a beta, all right? This is why I always recommend if you want to play around with it, use it in portable mode. So if we go to hotkeys, we do get an option at the top now by filter by hotkey. 
So if I set a hotkey, for instance, of this replay buffer, and I set that to, I don't know, five, for instance, that's a solid hotkey number, five. If I go to search filter by hotkey and type in the number five, it'll find everything that is using the hotkey five. And I could use control five, for instance, if I hold control and press five, I can search for that as well, which makes it really easy. If you're just a bit unsure if, if something is in use, then you can check. So if I get rid of that, Sorry, OBS crashed. But the, the last thing to do with the hotkeys is say if I've got, that, uh, I don't know, we set five up there and we want to use the hotkey five again, it's actually gonna give us this little error message saying that it's already in use somewhere. It doesn't say where it's in use, but this is where you can filter by the hotkey, search the number five, and you'll be able to see, oh, it's in use on both of them. So I can erase them and, and change one of them to, to whatever hotkey I want it just there which is a really nice touch. So as we said with the browser stuff, if I add a browser just here, uh, and I'm just gonna call it uh, browser, uh, one browser, for instance, and I'm gonna add that in there, you'll see we've got all the, uh, the standard sort of stuff. The beautiful thing that has been upgraded with the browsers that I wanna quickly touch on. So you'll probably see the updated here, the, uh, the CEF uh, has changed from 75 to uh, version 95. This is great for people that are using like custom CSS. It's gonna give you more functionality and obviously more improvement on performance as well, as well as all the other stuff. You don't know, need to know the ins and outs of that, but it's just a great thing, okay? It's a great thing. Uh, I'm not one that uses too many browser sources, but I know somebody that definitely does. Lifesaver, I'm looking at you. Always smashing stuff like that. This is going to be great for you and people that are using a lot of things through Streamer Bar, Leon Board, all that jazz, all right? Um, so we've created a browser source. We can actually refresh this browser source using a hotkey now. So if we go up to settings, jump into our hotkeys again, we can actually search for this one source. So if I t um, search for... Uh, down here, we, we can go down to the actual source, which should be all the way at the bottom. Uh, where is it? I called it one browser. There we go. And now we've got refresh cache of page. I keep using the number five as my hotkeys. Just, it's just the way it is. I'm gonna press okay. If I press number five, you'll see now, it'll refresh the page every single time. So whichever browser source you can have, you can actually refresh it in there nice and easy. Some other little bits that have changed. Uh, Docs now has its own little menu rather than having uh, going into view and then Docs. You can just get straight to Docs, which is really nice. Uh, just a nice little handy, handy bit that just helps you out. Speaking of handy bits that help you out, check this out. You guys that obviously do a lot of plugins uh, and everything like that, say you're using Excel Draw's Move Transition plugin, you know how it's a little bit of a headache to. Uh, have so many different things on screen at once. Well now, if we go to filters, you'll be able to see we've got all these filters. I can actually resize the filter window. So I can get more settings on screen. Cause if you remember, it used to show up really small like this and you were trying to look through all the settings in move transition and it's like, oh God, that's a little bit difficult. Let's even add a move source filter, for instance, and show you exactly. It, it was like this, really finicky, really difficult to find each setting and scroll between them. Well, now we can resize it. Obviously, resize the window like we did before. It just opens up more possibilities to, to be able to read the information better, which is absolutely insane. I don't know how this wasn't a feature already, but trust me, I've been using it for about 10 minutes and it is just so much easier. Like it, it makes me want to do more things with move transition. So much easier to just digest the information. But those are some of the main things that have really jumped out at me. Again, take a little look at through all the tweaks and keep up to date as well by following the GitHub page and you'll see all the updates on there. I'll be talking about them on my stream. Uh, another little one that I absolutely loved is Twitch panels now use light and dark mode depending on your OBS theme. So no longer do you have to set up a dock with the Twitch website, log in, change it to dark mode, reset the chat, go back into it, all that. It's actually gonna work natively inside of OBS now, which is really nice because we love dark mode, right? And uh, obviously with YouTube as well, I've noticed a lot of bug fixes for YouTube um, with errors when uh, trying to start a stream or, or it's crashing or anything like that. So there's a lot of things in there that probably will point out to you. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think to it. 
if you do test this out, be sure to share any crash reports or any issues that you do find with it uh, with the guys over in the OBS Discord because then that's how they can fix all the bugs and we can get our hands on it in a stable release ASAP. So that's what the point of a beta is. So have fun with it. Let me know how you get on. What is your favorite feature? Let me know in the comments. That's about it. So if you want to support me, then consider joining Patreon or channel members here on YouTube from like $1.99 a month, something like that. Supports me massively and my journey to doing this full time. Uh, that's pretty much it from me. Put your rock up in the stone and I'll see you in the next video. Much love. Oh yeah, happy new year, right? Happy new year. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.